Let's move on with Catholicism. This is actually three whole plates, and I'm going to move straight into Constantine. This is a picture, a uh, uh, painting of Constantine. Constantine's conversion and his vision in the sky of this cross up here and there is Constantine and look at this description of this vision supposed vision he had but look up here in the corner and that is a none other than a dragon so we'll see what Rome is all about look at the opulence of Rome if you call this Christianity you have to be thoroughly confused look at the cross even close up that cross look at the tridents we've seen those tridents before here is Hinduism and uh, Shiva and we have uh, uh, all of this pagan stuff being intermingled and it's a testament to what they are doing today here is Neptune and that trident moving on here is the opulence of Rome again look at the Medici family as I studied architecture the Medici's who were involved in Rome uh, uh, I believe that even had a uh, a pope that was a Medici. They were patrons to the arts. They owned everything. And so, yes, we admired the Medici family. And sure, I want a patron for architecture that would uh, uh, fund my designs as well. Here is the uh, statue of uh, David. And look at all of what they fund. Here's Leonardo da Vinci. Look what they've done in the past, as they've literally raped the poor, uh, offering indulgences, saying, uh, inventing things like purgatory so that you can have pay for your uh, loved ones to be out of uh, hell. Look at them. This is actually the cross of Lorraine, that double cross. Um, and look at the iconography that they use. There's that cross of Lorraine. There's the triple cross. I, they all have their meanings uh, or their actual names. Here's the uh, Maltese cross, uh, the Solvent cross down here, and these all originate. Uh, they uh, are probably some are prior to the Roman Empire, but the Roman Empire has embraced all of these. Here are modern Knights Templar. You can see the triple cross up above. Uh, these old guys, uh, they probably know what they're doing, but they are in this club. At the lower levels, the pageantry of it all is just uh, fascinating to them, and I can't even believe old men would dress like that. Uh, but uh, at the higher levels, it is literally evil and uh a controlling mechanism of the world and secret societies. Upon this rock I will build my church, the papal cross, they call it now. John Paul used this papal cross. Look at the papal cross moving along. Here's the tassels and the here's the cross of Lorraine uh, in the cardinal uh, structure. Look at the bent cross now. And that is a grotesque uh, description or uh, uh, graphic uh, representation of Christ. Uh, and it's also used in Satanism. They love the crucifix with Christ's cross because they believe that he is dead and gone and buried and not risen again at all. So look at this cross on this pope. Look at the skull and bones in the background. Look at, here's the cover of that. And you can see the cover also has the quintessential Babylonian uh, uh, logo, which is the winged lion. In addition to that, look at the cross itself. Here is the Eye of Lucifer. Here is that that um, uh, lion and wings. Now looking at uh, a close-up of that. On the bottom here is the globe. Looking at uh, Barbalon, look at all of the icons relating to Babylon. Here's the Knights Templar, cross and crown, the double eagle of Rome. Look at the hat that they wear. This is the fish hat. And so you can see on its side, I actually uh, visited Notre Dame uh, in France, and they had a uh, one of the uh, popes, um, a sarcophagus in the back. And uh, whether it is a pope or bishop with this hat, and as it's laid on its side, I think I have a description of that. Uh, somewhere. But anyway, this is the fish hat, Dagon. You can see that it is representing a fish, and here is the Sumerian uh, Babylonian uh, fish hat, Dagon the fish god. And you can see them adorning themselves with that fish mitre of Dagon. 
Here is the pine cone, and this is Babylonia as well. And then you have the pine cone, and these two looks like serpent and bird hybrids again. Here is the dragon hybrids, and now uh, just all of this iconography. This is all idol worship, all adornment, all out of gold. Look at what is going on. This is not Christianity. Please look just with your own eyes. Uh, as a Christian, we should be fully understanding this. It's obvious. Uh, here's that um, uh, a uh, Roman hand of power. You see the two fingers. This is what the uh, Swiss guards do. But you see the pine cone here and various elements of the Roman Empire. Moving on, the pine cone. And here are the peacocks adorning that. And then uh, pine cone on the staffs. This is the Babylonian, a Sumerian. We have the uh, sun and the crescent moon. Here's the sun and the crescent moon. In the Eucharist itself, the sun and the crescent moon. And the Pope, new Pope Benedict, sun and the crescent moon with the wafer in there. Here is the sun and the crescent moon uh, as depicted on on the bull. This was the bull that the uh, Hebrews were shaped out of gold in the wilderness. And guess what? Uh, uh, God said, look what they do. And this is an abomination. And so there's a fundamental difference between what the pagans do and what Satan does with his uh, flock and what God is saying specifically not to do. This is Isis and that bull crescent moon. And again, the hybrid bull crescent moon uh, in this tarot card. Look at the crescent moon. This is actually the Om symbol in Southeast Asia, and it shows you clearly that that Om contains the crescent moon and sun. Om is that chanting that you do, and uh, demons like this Om sound uh, for some reason, and I found that out in channeling. They like this type of, of a sound, and they are gathered to this type of sound.